But if you've never heard of Vincent Buddy Cianci, then you've probably been living under a rock for the past couple of decades. Cianci served two stints in 21 years as mayor of Providence, Rhode Island, punctuated by convictions, one for attacking a man he thought was having an affair with his wife with a log and a lit cigarette, and the other for corruption, ending in a five-year prison sentence for racketeering. Everyone knew Buddy, who died in 2016 at age 74. But more often than not, stories about his life and legacy celebrated the political rogue who brought a renaissance to the city in a line of pasta sauce called the mayor's own marinara to kitchens everywhere. But much of the dark and dangerous side of the man escaped public view. His ex-wife Sheila Bentley lived it, but said nothing publicly. Now, after decades of silence, she's bringing it front and center for the rest of us, recently speaking with Boston Globe reporter Amanda Milkovitz, just as a book about her husband's rise and fall in their marriage, Prince of Providence, came to the Trinity repertory stage in that city. Sheila Bentley joins me now, along with Amanda Milkovitz and Rebecca Gibble, who played Sheila brilliantly, I should say, in the play. It's great to meet all three of you. It's Thank really you. great to meet you. So you're divorced 36 years from this guy. You don't say a word. No. He dies you wait even longer, and then you finally speak. Why did you wait so long to out the worst of Buddy Cianci, sure? Uh, actually, the meeting that I had with Becky. Is that really what did it? It really is. I read that in Amanda's piece. Is that really, is know, if you truth. had never met her, you never would have told the public about what he did in your life no. together? No. And so what was it about her and meeting her that convinced you you could do this? Well, she asked to meet me, mm -hmm. so someone was interested in my side for a change. But everybody's been interested in your story forever. You weren't interested in telling it, were you? At the time, wasn't right. Yeah. And I really had seven major, major things that happened to my life in the past seven years. And when I was in a hospital for two months looking at the ceiling, I decided then that at, if I had the right opportunity, I would say something. And it came along. And it did. And then she came along. And, it's sort uh, yes. of like a troika <laughs> it, of it was amazing. You know, uh, uh, it, I don't want to go. I mean, I don't want to dwell on some of the gory details, but a lot of people don't who haven't read Amanda's piece, which you should. Can we just the second inauguration? You almost didn't make it, right? Uh, correct. What 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 had to be done for you to be presentable enough to make it to this thing? Uh, we had had a very bad argument, and he had hit the side of my face. And when I went to get prepared to go downstairs for the the people, it was. Uh, it was not a good thing. So a really close friend of mine and the doctor across the street went upstairs and fixed it. So he hit you, essentially. Yeah. Was that the only time? No. And there was psychological abuse that was detailed in the story, too. I mean, there's a control. That, I yeah. mean, what was he like to live with, to be with? His greatest um, weapon was his brain. Meaning what? And the, the mental anguish that he personally loved to put you through in a day was overwhelming. How do you feel? I mean, you said to uh, Amanda this, that you felt freer. I mean, how does it feel finally after decades and decades? Feels of, great. Does it really? Feels great. And did you do this for you or did you do it for the world to know more about the man that we tend to romanticize? And I have to say, after reading the story, I'm embarrassed. Uh, but everyone loves villains. Well, yeah, but you shouldn't love these kinds of villains. Did, it, did you do it for you or did you do it for... All I did us. it for me because I was ready and I was living in a glass bubble for so many years of pretension and it just, I said, I'm doing it. Okay. It feels so like I went to confession. At one point you say to Buddy Cianci, I want a divorce and then we'll go to the play about what transpired after that. Here it is. Can't you just wait? Till when? Till the strike is over? No. The election. What election? The, the, the next election. I can't win without you. That is four years away. I know, but can't you do it? Four more years and you try to get me to reconsider no thanks. No, 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 I, I promise. I, I I won't try and make you change your mind. That is somehow even more insulting. So you cut a deal with him, did you not? Many. I'm sorry, but I mean, you cut a deal, <laughs> and that's it. You asked for cash. You essentially asked for money. Well, tell us what you asked no, for. No, I asked for full custody of my ch our child. Mm -hmm. I asked for the house that I had put the down payment on mm -hmm. that we lived in with my communion money. Um, but it was in his name, unfortunately. And I asked for some cash.
So what do you know about her? I mean, you've spent more than a decade off and on in Providence. Yeah. What do you know about her before you met her? I knew nothing. And I did a, a Google search when I, I, this is the only role I've ever campaigned for. I told Sheila. Is that true? Yep. I've never chased a role before and I knew I wanted to, to play Why her did you want it because of the way that the snippets I'd read in Mike Stanton's book made me kind of lean forward and go, there's, there's a lot more here. And so I campaigned for the role, I got the role, and I, I knew that um, I wanted to speak with her before I undertook it because it's so easy to get swept away in the, the like, entertainment side of things. Did it change the way you played it? After Hugely. Now? How so? Um, I tend to be pretty bubbly, and uh, I move too much, and Sheila is so grounded. Um, I, it changed my bearing. It also changed the things that I held as important in those scenes. And it helped me find a vulnerability within that strength because she is the toughest woman I know. Can I tell you something? You in that play are exactly like her in the 10 minutes I've known her. I mean, it Thanks, almost, and no, but I'm re it is really eerie, I should say. By the way, did you ever meet the guy? I did. And what I was did. that like? I sang at a gala, and one of his guys came over afterwards and said, hey, the man wants to meet you. And I said, all right. And he came over and he shook my hands with two hands. And then he put this one hand on my shoulder and he was saying, I can't remember what he was saying, but then he slid the hand all the way down to my butt. Is that true? Completely true. You know, uh, Mike Stanton told me a week or so ago that the play does justice to the book. Did she do justice to you? Amazingly so. Yeah, I thought so too. Just so, eerie. So you mm -hmm. enter uh, uh, the scene here and how long have you been trying to get to her? Actually, it was really over the last month. It didn't, the timing really was perfect in so many ways. I saw the play. I saw it at dress rehearsal. And not only did Buddy Cianci stand out, but Sheila was so powerful and so interesting. And I realized the real Sheila is still out there and has never talked to anybody. What do you know about the real, real Sheila? She not didn't much. know anything. Did you? Not much. I mean, So I what knew. did you think the story was? Just you get to speak to the woman who hasn't given I've an interview? Always, is that I'm it? always curious about the people who surround people of power. All that we knew of Sheila was she was a smile and a wave. She was a glamorous, beautiful blonde standing next to him. Um, and they had an only daughter. And I heard about the abuse, but it was only peripherally. But we, I'd never heard from her. And I wondered, what is it like to stand there and to witness this? Did it make you angry that people like me not only celebrated the guy? I used to make jokes. I don't know anymore about the log and the cigarette thing. And then I see the play, and I feel like a total it jerk. Was did wasn't you? a joke. I know, but mm. did, did, did you get angry when you... I had to pretend it wasn't me. Really? Yes. So could you show me what you brought? You have a couple of t-shirts here. Could you show me Sheila what Sheila made me some gifts. Uh, she did? So <laughs> what, Sheila, what, what, is, uh, what am I looking at now? Uh, the last dance. The, the last, last dance? inauguration. The last time I had to smile and pretend that everything was great. Well, you pretended well. Can you turn that I over? I know. What's and on then... The other, what's on the other side of that? <laughs> now, now, what is what is that exactly, Sheila? Well, I know what it is, but how did that come about? It is the official portrait for the city of Providence that you had done. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, seriously, Jim. And this really dear friend of mine, who was a tremendous artist named Maxwell Mays, sat with a pen and just I love it. Did it. So you have one more. Can I see this one Absolutely. quickly, there, Rebecca? This is also pretty great. Now, you I have to say, you look real. That's your kid in the middle, right? It was, yeah. So you look really mm. happy there, no? It was my last performance. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, a campaign ad, and the the cameraman said, "Just look adoringly." So uh, I want to get back to you just for a couple of seconds. We talked about what Buddy did to you. You weren't. You didn't just lay there and take it. There's a scene in this where you burst, you, you, burst in <laughs> on him with a woman in a hotel with a gun. Is that true? No, it didn't happen that way. You didn't pull a gun on the guy. It was at his office. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> sorry. But it really happened. Oh, well, it wasn't loaded. Did you ever think of killing him? Statute of limitations is run. Did you I ever think of killing him? I don't believe you. What? I don't believe you. The statute of limitations. Well, I guess that gives me the answer, doesn't it? And the other thing I loved in your story that you did is uh, uh, when you were angry at he was out till what five o'clock in the morning one day when he got home. What'd you do? Flushed his wig down the toilet. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, is the is the city's view of him changing because of the play? Because of your story, I mean, I know it's anecdotal; it hasn't been like a poll. But is it going to change? I mean, this lovable rogue thing, as I said, really. 
It just well, doesn't I, work. I think that the the narrative is still intact. There's this kind of false choice between the real buddy and the fake buddy, but the real buddy hasn't been exposed. And by Sheila speaking and. Uh, that's the power of storytelling, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody gets into one room, is breathing the same air, and they see somebody stand up mm -hmm. and tell their truth bravely, and pretty soon other people start standing up and going, a similar thing happened to me, a similar thing happened to me. So I, I think that's Absolutely. the power of Absolutely. Someone forward. finally said it. Everybody has said this under their breath. This person is evil. He is a manipulative. I can't tell you how many times I've heard those stories. But Sheila actually stepped forward, and she knows him better than pretty much anybody. Well <laughs> so are you get, since you wrote your story, are, are, mm -hmm. are people saying those kinds oh, of things to you? Uh, they are looking at him differently now? Uh, they, I don't know that they look at him differently. It's more people coming forward and saying, thank God Sheila finally said something. But he was entertaining, and people love a comic. Mm -hmm. They do, but the He was, was Don writing. Rickles of Rhode Island, mm -hmm. really. Yeah, but mm -hmm. with an underside, too. What's it like playing somebody? And you saw it twice? twice? I did. What is it like? Well, you loved it, right? Do you like Opening it? Opening night was completely different than the last one that I saw this weekend. I was there this weekend, too. I uh, guess I missed you. What did you think of this? It, I don't mean it just has her, evolved but so that it, it, it's an amazing performance. And what is it like? Have you ever done anything on the stage with the person you're playing no. sitting <laughs> no. 20 feet away? What, what is that like? I, I mean, I feel like the story is still incomplete. You uh -huh. know, I, mm -hmm. I feel like the way, I, I feel like now not to just throw the spotlight on you, but I feel like now she, we need a princess of Providence. We need to hear Sheila's story because I feel like it scratches the bare surface in this play and the iceberg that is underneath that Sheila lived and experienced is fascinating and multidimensional and I think a vital, a vital part of, of the CNC legacy. Can I mm -hmm. add my two cents to this sort of editorially? Sure. I had the two women here from the New York Times a couple of weeks ago who wrote the book She Said about Harvey Weinstein. Mm, and goodness. after they were here, we got flooded with communication saying, mostly from women, about mm -hmm. how strengthened the women felt by hearing those stories. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't tell you how many people I've talked to who read your piece, some of whom saw your play, mm -hmm. and who knew you were coming here tonight, who mm -hmm. said what you have meant in their lives. How does that make you feel? It means a lot to me. Yeah. It means a lot. I just wanted to be as dignified and poised as I could. And people can get strength to see that a lot of people are going through this. Yeah. A lot of political lives. Well, I want to say you were totally dignified with one exception. That picture of Buddy in the uh, prison garb was a little... <laughs> I didn't do that. Under, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not it's that talented. Great to meet all three of you. Were, is that play going to come back somewhere? Hopefully. I really, start, you were brilliant. Your co workers were Thank brilliant. You, Jim. Pleasure, Pleasure, to meet, Pleasure you. to meet you. Your piece was great. Thank the you Providence so much. Bureau is great. And I'm so thrilled to meet you. Thank you so much. So great to see you. Thanks so much.